Facebook. Good morning. It is Monday and it's time for another Monday Morning Mojo session. So excited you're here with me today. All right, I'm going to let everybody in on Zoom. Hi, good morning. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Jill, welcome back. I've missed you. I missed you too, but you know, I've been listening. <laughs> oh, good. I get these conflicts in the morning early, early, because I'm up so early and I guess, you know, I just, I'm happy. <laughs> well, I'm happy to see all of you. Thanks for joining me uh, on Mondays. I know it is early <laughs> for some of you. 7.30 might be an early start. I am playing around with the idea of moving it to eight. So we'll see, I'll keep you posted. Um, and hello everybody on Facebook. It is Monday, March 29th. And uh, if you're in New York, if you're in the Northeast here, it's a very windy day, um, but uh, it is sunny and happy in here. So <laughs> as a matter of fact, I wanna share with you guys, I've, I've shown you this before. I'm a big fan of Gabby Bernstein. I don't know how many of you have read her books or follow Gabby. She has this card deck, uh, Spirit Junkie. Um, it's 52 cards with a different affirmation on it. So nothing, you know, weird. It's just pull a card and decide that that's your, your mantra for the day. So I did that before we started. And mine says, owning my power inspires others to do the same. I am not afraid to shine. So I want to share that with you guys. I want you to own your power today. Don't be afraid to shine. We've talked about that here before. If you play small to make someone else feel comfortable, you're not helping them or yourself. So be your glorious self and, and shine and do your thing. And what I um, wanna talk to you about this morning is I think along those lines, it's, it's kind of really about getting into the mindset that you're here to accomplish something. You're here to do great things and it's about taking action towards those things right and so that's what i love to do on monday mornings is to just throw out something thought provoking hopefully inspiring that gets you thinking i want you to think i want to be you know and, and i appreciate you letting me be your high performance coach whether you realize it or not that's what these monday morning sessions are it's really a little coaching and um, if you want to get a lot out of these sessions, take some of the questions that we talk about here and some of those thoughts and put them into, into effect for the week, right? Make it your theme for the week. And so today, I want to talk a little bit about mindset. I want to talk a little bit about choice. Uh, and we're going to start out with this statement. If you're going to take notes, jot this down. Your circumstances do not determine your outcome. Your circumstances do not determine your outcome. What does determine your outcome are the choices that you make. It's all about the choices that you make. So I have this quote here that I wanna to read to you from Viktor Frankl. And it says, everything can be taken from a man or a woman, but one thing, the last of human freedoms is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. That's Viktor Frankl. Um, and so if you're not familiar with who he is, um, he was a man that was captured by the Nazis and spent time in a concentration camp during World War II. Um, and he believes that what saved his life was his mindset. Now he was also a psychiatrist, uh, and, but he went through unspeakable things and torture. His family was murdered. Um, he was stripped of everything. And he wrote this book, A Man's Search for Meaning. And if you read any, if there's any one book that I think anyone should read in their lifetime, it's that one. And um, what he talks about in this book over and over again is that, you know, circumstances can show up, some things that you could never imagine, right? And God willing, we'll never live through anything like he did. And yet those circumstances do not have to rob you of everything that you hold in your core, right? Your mindset belongs to you. And so, you know, we can, we can look at it in a very, you know, dramatic way, in a very um, life altering way, right? But let's just 
bring it into today and some of the things that happen. I mean, how many of you can relate to in your business, a deal falls apart? The deal goes sideways. There are other people involved in that transaction that are just, they are, they are testing your faith in something bigger than you, right? I always say to people, do not, do not get me to a point where I forget that I am friends with Jesus. Do not get me to that point, but it happens, right? And then there are things that show up that affect us because the economy shifts or interest rates shift, or we have something like a pandemic come into our world. Uh, and, and maybe there are financial pressures or health issues. And at the end of the day, there's always going to be something coming at us, right, in this world. And so we have to make a decision about how we're going to respond to those circumstances or events. So if you are taking notes, write this down. E, and I think I've shared this before, E plus R equals O. And if you coach with me personally, you know we've talked about this, right? So E plus R equals O, the event plus your reaction is what determines your outcome. Not the event itself, but how you choose to respond to it. So I got thinking about this because once again, I was listening to a podcast yesterday and there was a, something said that prompted all these thoughts. And I said, ah, we're gonna talk about this in Mojo tomorrow. And so this E plus R equals O, you know, we could both be in the same situation more or less or at the same event and, and react completely different to it. And therefore our reality is shaped by our thoughts, right? So if I choose to respond differently than you do, I will more than likely have a very different outcome from that event. And so what is life here to teach you? What are these challenges here to teach you? And you know, are we going to approach life with a victim mindset or a victorious mindset? Now, I don't think anyone sets out to be a victim. However, do we fall into that trap throughout the day and, and we catch ourselves saying, well, I couldn't do that because, or that didn't work out because, or I would have, but you don't realize what happened, right? So it may sound reasonable at that moment for us to start looking at all these reasons why something didn't work out, but again, my, my loves, is it reasons or results that you seek? You can't have them both, right? So if you're looking for results, you can't have a list of reasons as to why it didn't happen. Now, I'm not saying everything always works out the way that you plan. However, what is your intention when you set out to, to pursue that goal? Is it to figure it out and get there one way or another, even if it means shifting a little bit? So for instance, when things are, are not really going according to plan, do we change the goal or do we just change the way we're gonna get there, right? Is the opportunity to scrap it and say, you know what, I'm not gonna do that after all? Or is it about saying, okay, the goal is my goal because that was my intention from the very beginning. I'm committed to the goal and I need to change how I'm gonna get there now. I need to change my strategy. I need to change what I'm doing. I need to do more of something, less of something. I need to get some assistance or clarity. Um, and, and that's really what's gonna get you on course and determine your outcome. Am I speaking to anybody today? And anybody relating to that? I mean, I'm, I'm gonna to try to keep an eye on you guys on Facebook too. Jill, am I speaking truth to you today? I see your hand yeah. is up. Yeah, yeah, no, and I love the uh, the terminology that you're using, you know, reasons, results, victor, victor, victor or victim, uh, you know, kind yeah. of speaks to, to decision making, you know, along the way. Yeah, and I think it all comes back to that core concept about choice, right? You have a choice. And I think that we have to look at, you know, the fact that our thoughts, we control our thoughts and our thoughts are really what shape our emotions. And so it's easy to say, but you don't understand going through a really tough time, or you don't know how hard this is, or, you know, this is really stressing me out. And I, I get it. I understand that, you know, as humans, we all have those thoughts and feelings. I do too. The, the question is, are you going to allow that to control you? Or are you going to say, okay, time out. Let me examine what I'm feeling and why I'm feeling it. And let me change the way I'm thinking about it. And I guarantee you, the moment you change your thoughts, you'll change the way you feel, 
right? Because our emotions are, they're ours. No one can make you feel anything and no situation or circumstance can make you feel a certain way. We choose that based on the response that we're having to that particular event. And I get it. Some of you are like, you know what, Anna, it's too early for this conversation. I really don't want to look at it. And I understand. I do. Play this recording back at another time when you're able to process it. But I do speak truth to you this morning because I've lived it too. You know, I've lived it too. I've had my moments of being a victim and realizing this is not serving me, right? I can go through life telling myself that um, all these things are happening around me and to me, or I can make the decision to say life is happening for me and I get to understand and figure out what's right for me and make a decision and make a choice. Right. So that's the difference between being the victim or the victor. Right. A victim just allows these things to happen. You know, they're they're on the cause side of things. You know, it's because this happened or or this is causing this this to happen for me or not happen for me. And a, and a victor is on the effect side of things. They want to make change. They want to affect change. They want to make those choices and those decisions. So. You know, I think it's a timely conversation too because we're at the end of the first quarter. And I know many of you who are, are listening to this and who are on the Mojo group, you're, you're in business, you're entrepreneurs, many of you. Uh, you're very goal-oriented people or you probably wouldn't be plugged into this anyway. Um, so what is happening for you right now? Like we have gone through the first quarter and we are starting the second quarter in just a week. And are you on track for your goals? Are you really crushing it right now? Or are you in a pattern, perhaps, maybe not a lot of you, but there's someone who could be in a pattern who's always in a pattern of playing catch up, right? Who's like, well, I, I'm not really on track, but you know what? It's just the first quarter, winter, this, you know, I, I'm gonna really like, I'm gonna come into this second quarter now and I'm gonna give it 150% and I'm gonna push forward and I'm gonna get on track by June. So if that's you, I just want to ask you, how does that usually work out for you? Because the, the thing about giving 150%, by the way, you can't, you can't, you only have a hundred percent to give. So every day that we're not giving a hundred percent, there's this law of diminishing return, right? The same way momentum works to your advantage and you can, you know, make that, that snowball start rolling downhill for you. Well, it works in reverse. Every time you don't give a hundred percent, you create this law of diminishing return and you're actually falling further and further back in your gap towards your goal. Jill, do you have something to say? I saw that you came off. <laughs> I do. If you um, do here on Zoom, just raise your hand. I'll, I'll find you. Yeah, no, in terms of, you know, being task oriented, you know, I know I'm I'm very driven and what I wind up feeling like I've got attention deficit disorder because there's just so much uh, that needs to get done and it's easy to get overwhelmed and you can say, geez, it's January. Now it's March. Oh my God, where am I in my own goal setting so that how much <laughs> how much do I how much do I gain or how much do I lose by spreading myself so thin? That that seems to be my my challenge at this point. I love that. And you're not alone because I know many of us can feel the same way. Because here's the thing, we are high performance people, right? I think I think as human beings, that's one of the things that inspires me most and gets me jazzed up as a coach. And probably why I love doing this mojo, even if I talk to myself one day, it's okay. Uh, because we're programmed for achievement right? We're, as human beings, our minds are programmed for achievement. So we do, you know, we're big thinkers. We do want to take on a lot of things. I think that the, if I was to say one thing that gets in the way of people hitting their goals, it's clarity. Because we can talk a lot about focus. We can talk a lot about, you know, discipline around habits, creating the right plan. But at the, at the core of it all, if we're not clear about what we want, we're not really going to achieve it, right? Because we don't know what we're going after. And so in, in the busyness, and, I, and I'm gonna, I am gonna caution you guys, some of our, our big goals and dreams can also become distractions, right? The busyness, we have to kind of channel it into, you know, what are our core values? What's our personal mission statement? What is our intention behind the goals that we have? Basically, why do you wanna do what you're doing? And so when I make a decision to take on a new project or a new opportunity, it's got to line up with all that, or it's just a distraction, 
even though I could do it and have fun, or I could do it and be good at it, or I could do it and have some successful results, if it's not lining up with the, the very thing I say is my, my goal or my core values, then is it really just a distraction? And so sometimes, you know, the power is in saying no as well. So I hope I answered that, that question. I see on Facebook, Lindsay, hi, Lindsay. She said she really needed this conversation this morning around, uh, do we change the goal or the way that we're going to get there? So if you're, if I'm your coach, we're not changing the goal because we're going to make sure when we set the goal that it's really your goal, right? We're going to do the work on the upfront. And so if your, your goal is clear and you're committed and, and your intentions around that and your big why are clear, then why would we change it just because we're off track, right? I put a quote on the, on the Facebook page. I think it was last week. When you get a flat tire, do you slash all three, the rest of the other, the other four, do you slash them all and just say, you know, I'm done. The car should just sit here. I mean, that's kind of what happens with goal setting. If you're off track, don't slash the rest of your tires. Just fix the one tire and get going again. All right, Megan, I saw you have your hand up too. Am I speaking to you this morning? Um, yes, as always, of course. And um, I was just thinking about one of the things that I, I'm sure I also learned from you was yeah. that the the little modification I would say to E plus R equals O is actually taking a moment and looking at the, looking at my actions in the event and looking at like how my business is running during the event yes. and learning from it. So Love it's like that. for the long term outcome, it's like look at what happened, look at like what we actually could have done better in like a neutral way, but like seeing yeah. all those things as a learning opportunity also. And then that for us, like that shift to being like, I don't want to admit I was wrong. I don't want to see anything I did weird. I don't want to know about it to like looking at anything that goes wrong as like a moment to learn and improve, like changed everything. I think for us. hundred percent that I just have to give you a little, <laughs> So what, what you just said, Megan, is, is really a characteristic of the, of a high achiever, the way a high achiever thinks, right? And that's also part of being accountable and part of being the victor, not the victim, right? Because um, I love everything that you said. <clears throat> so when, when you are off course or, you know, you feel like you're, you should always, number one, we should always be inspecting what we expect, I got that from my business partner, Rosemary Pilati. She says it all the time, inspect what you expect. And so as you're doing that and you're tracking, you know, towards your goals and you realize you're off track, what Megan is saying is like, take a minute and, and really like assess where you are and why, and be willing to say, do I have a part in this or not? Right. Is my DNA on this? It's not to blame. It's not to go into a negative mindset. It's to be accountable because if you had, if you had some cause in it, then you get to create a new effect, right? That's another way to look at cause and effect. So if you can say, Hey, you know, if I change this, then maybe I'll get over here. Then, you know, that's the power in examining and, and asking yourself. And I think it's also a sign of leadership, you know, and I think leadership has to start with ourselves and how we govern ourselves, how we lead ourselves. And so if we can look at something and say, you know, I have some responsibility in that, I'm accountable to that, then I can, I have the power to change it and control it too, which is awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Megan. That was good. Hi, Sarah. I see your hand is up too. Good morning. <clears throat> yes, I am. Um... Have ha I think the other thing uh, that has been uh, true for me in the last month or two um, is the kind of curveballs that life throws you, um, and and I think that the only way that you can well uh, the, the one of the more effective ways I have found to respond to that is that you you are only responsible for you. Um, you cannot you cannot determine um, how it is that other people are going to respond to things or necessarily change their outcomes um, because of the decisions that they make um and you know don't get sucked into the drama there because right. uh, because that gets really easy um so anyway I, i've been dealing with my own sort of birth family dysfunction because mm -hmm. my father's been in the hospital and um and everybody falls back into their old roles right <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i get that and you yeah. have to be really firm about your boundaries and say, no, I'm not, I am not playing those games anymore. 
That's um, awesome. hundred percent. I love, I love that too. And you know, I, yeah, you, you can't control someone else's behavior. You, you can only control yours. And, and so I think, you know, it, like you said, it goes back to mindset. How do I want to, you know, navigate the situation and, and is it true for you? Right. I think when you see, cause sometimes, you know, we can, we can grab other people's stuff and it doesn't belong to you. Right. So you have to make sure that you're clear about like what, you know, those mm-hmm. thoughts or feelings mm-hmm. are not mine. They're hers or his, and, and it doesn't belong to me. It doesn't need to affect me. So that that's great. Yeah. So I think, you know, again, it, you know, mindset, not, not circumstance. It's, it's all about how you show up and how you really want to um, take responsibility, I guess, really for your own actions and for what you bring to any, any situation. Um, and I think too, you know, it's about realizing that our experiences they're here to teach us something. I know I heard some of you say that to me this morning, right? It, it's about what is the lesson? I mean, even, even failure, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to call failure, uh, failure is a mindset when you think about it, right? It's not even a circumstance. Failure is a mindset. So when, you know, I've heard this before too, either we win or we learn, change your, your language. It doesn't have to be win or lose either you win or you learn. So even when you don't get there with the, quite the way you thought you would or as fast as you thought you would, or if, if you know you fail at something, okay, right? So what did you learn from it? Because the lessons that you pull away from those experiences, I mean, that's what shapes us. And those are the things that really give us the tools to be better the next time. I mean, how do you become a high performance thinker? How do you become a high performance achiever? You think it happens because everything comes easy? No. I mean, the challenges and the the failures bring opportunity because if you really are actualized, self-actualized, right? And you're on a mission to learn how to become a better version of yourself every single day, which is really what we're doing here on Mondays, right? Just trying to become a better version of ourselves day after day then we should be okay asking ourselves, all right, so what could I have done differently? What could I have done better? What do I need to learn? There's something that maybe I'm not, you know, I don't have the right tools in my toolbox. Maybe there's something that I need to learn. There's someone I need to bring into my situation. Maybe I need to hire a coach. Maybe I need to talk to different people, right? So there's always an opportunity at, at any given moment, right? So even the most challenging of circumstances, what can you learn from it, right? And so again, before anyone starts getting, you know, shut down, negativity starts creeping in, the drunk monkey, we used to talk about the drunk monkey in bold, you know, that little voice that's saying, don't listen to her, she doesn't know what she's talking about. It's so easy for her, look, she's doing this, she's got that. Listen, I have been there too, okay? Wherever I am today is not where I started, just like you, right? Wherever you are right now is an opportunity to go forward. So if if you are struggling with something, I'm sending you a big hug, whatever it is. If you're struggling with something personally, emotionally, financially, professionally, I'm sending you a big hug. And then I wanna look at you in the eye and grab you by the shoulders and say, what can we do next? What are your choices? Because there's always a choice, right? So that is the opportunity. What are the choices? And another great question is, what am I learning from this, right? I mean, if we're not learning, we're not growing. And if we're not growing, we're dying. So don't be afraid of the hard times. Don't be afraid of the challenges because that's what shapes our character. And that's what develops skill set and strategy and gets us to see things from a different perspective, right? So I just wanted to say that failure is, is a mindset. It's, it's really not a circumstance. Um, so going back to, because I know we're going to run out of time, the fact that we're starting the second quarter, I'm going to challenge each one of you today to assess where you are in the pursuit of your goals. And that's professionally, personally, financially. And if you don't have goals, if you're not even sure what to look at, then that's step one, my friend, is to create goals for yourself. Because goal goal setters and goal achievers live bigger lives. 
right? And, and I want to be clear on it's the goal achiever, okay? Because you can set a million goals. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the person who's getting to the finish line on a goal that gets to see the results of that, gets to feel it, gets to live it, gets to experience those new circumstances, right? Because they got there. And guess what happens? You set another goal. And then you set another goal, right? Because it's programming, because you see the results. So goal getters live bigger lives because we're programmed to want to achieve something next, right? It's always about, well, what's next? What's the next thing? And, and, and I think that, you know, those of us who can identify with being high performance people, right? Or high achievers, high performance people, they really get excited to share the journey with other people, right? So... I want to also open that conversation up probably more this year with you, you know, is how do you identify with yourself, right? Are you a high performance person? Are you seeking goals, big goals? Do you want to achieve, you know, exciting things? And if so, why? And if so, do you feel a little pull to want to, you know, inspire other people to do the same? Do you feel that little pull to want to bring people into your world and, and lead them or show them or mentor them, right? Or, or collaborate with them? Because that is when things really get exciting. When we create those, those connections to inspire and empower other people, which kind of ties back into my, my card this morning, right? That, you know, owning your power inspires others to do the same. So don't be afraid to shine. Um, I think that, you know, high performance people are always looking to, they don't even realize that they just fall into that natural mentor type relationship. So when you do that, how much does your life grow too? It's exponential. It's exponential because the more opportunity, I'll just use, if I can use myself as an example, the more opportunities I seek to show up as a thought leader, a speaker, a coach, a business leader. I, I recognize, I, I, I hope and pray I inspire people along the way to achieve their own great things. But here's the thing, in the pursuit of, of wanting to see other people succeed, in the pursuit of really wanting to be an influencer, and in the pursuit of wanting to be a catalyst for change for people, I have to be at the top of my game. I have to read the books, listen to the podcast, pay attention to stuff going on around me. I have to, I have to strive to be better every day, or I'm going to hit a limit or a capacity on the things I could possibly teach anyone or share with anyone, right? So there's opportunity for us to grow when we make a commitment to help other people grow, right? So by pouring into other people, I get better. And that's what I love about being a coach, right? And so you don't have to be a professional coach to have that opportunity. We can show up as leaders every single day in our daily life. And so that may be another question I put out to you today uh, to get you thinking this week, right? So uh, again, I see that I'm talking Italian. And so I'm sorry if, I, if you felt like you had to watch me and do one of these today. Uh, it's, I can't help it. If I sit on my hands, I don't know how to talk to you. Um, but I'm just curious, what are your final thoughts? Any ahas? Uh or I love you guys on Facebook. I see that you're on there too. Um, and I do uh, appreciate you guys. So put your comments there as well. What was your big takeaway or aha from, from this morning? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Goals. Set goals, second quarter. Set goals, absolutely, good. And you know, the 12-week year is a great book for you guys to pick up because what that does is it helps you take your goals and put them into 12-week uh, increments so that you can really manage your activities towards the goals, like really chunk it down. And that, that if you, you know, need some help with that or information, reach out. Anybody else before we go? Yes. Uh, hi, Karen. Hi, how are you? Good. Pretty much like focus on what you desire and uh, failure is the mindset. That pretty much sets like, you know, for me to like think deep into how I'm going to start my week. And awesome. Love Thank it. You. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Anybody else? We have time for one more at least. Yeah. I think it's that attitude as a mindset. Same thing that failure is an attitude. Cause I think most people think failure happens to them and mm -hmm. they don't realize that it's the way that they're interpreting the the circumstances it's a very interesting perspective yeah failure is a mindset good i love it anybody else 
Yeah, Megan, I see you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I was just gonna say that I, what I heard also is is about taking the time to examine your feelings and taking the time to think about goals. And it's just a good reminder that this actually takes time. Yeah. Like I need to set aside the time to process what I'm feeling, to learn about it, to look at my goals, to re-examine my goals, to show up for other people. And that's just a good reminder. It's, it's, it, if I just don't think about this stuff, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, for sure. So I'll leave you guys with this thought too. John Maxwell talks about reflection time. And uh, so if, so ideally, if you can set aside 15, 30 minutes a day to reflect on the day, right? What went well? What could be different? What did you learn today? That kind of, you know, um, process. And I think I shared that on a mojo too. I, we had some questions like that you can ask yourself during reflection time. And then he also says, do that on a monthly basis, maybe schedule a half hour or if you need 45 minutes and think about your whole month, right? Like, what did you do this month towards your goals, your activities, what worked, what didn't work, what are you going to change? And then also to build in time like that quarterly, and yearly. So of course, as you are reflecting on bigger periods of time, you give yourself more time to do so. Um, I'm not always so good with that, uh, as I should be myself, but I do, I do it pretty often. Uh, and it's a powerful exercise. And it, it just, you know, again, like you said, Megan, like, why don't we give ourselves time to just sit and think, right? Because I think we're always going, going, going. And, and that is not a high performance person, right? Just Constantly being on the go is not the high performance that we're talking about. You know, it, it involves action, but it also has to be strategic thinking. Because if you're not taking the time to think strategically, are your actions going to be aligned with what's really going to help you get where you need to be? So, you know, sometimes we have to recognize that production is not just about movement, right? We have to just, we have to focus on, you know, what is the, what are the activities that we're in? And, and I would say that reflection time, thinking time is a powerful activity. That's action, that is an activity. So really good stuff today, you guys. I hope that you've, uh, I, I trust, I don't hope, I trust you got something out of this today that, that you needed to hear and that's what it's all about. And uh, I really appreciate you all. And I love what um, we, we're seeing you know, with this group. So continue to share this with other people. Uh, continue to invite people to the Facebook group and share the Zoom and the, um, the fact that we do this on Monday mornings with them. And uh, if there's anything I can do to help you, just reach out. I look forward to talking with you one-on-one -on -one and uh, seeing you guys back here next Monday. So have a great week and I will see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.